Hey guys, I would like to talk to you all about Paradigm Pro Co Studios and our first project known as Relics of the Unknown. But first things first, wasn't that logo animation to just die for? By far one of our favorite additions to the Paradigm brand, especially when we started the company. Today we decided to go live with most of our content, like the backstories as well as the trailers. Get ready for an interesting ride, everybody. Let's get it. This first story is the Relics of the Unknown's whole project backstory. Paradigm Pro Co. Studios presents Relics, Relics of, of the, the Unknown. Unknown. Present day. Cerro Paranal, Mountain in Chile, Telescope Observatory. A lead scientist named Dr. Alex Beck is suddenly called in after getting news that there is rather strange activity occurring within the Scorpius constellation's brightest star named Antares. Dr. Beck arrives in what seems like a matter of minutes to observe the strange phenomenon for himself. Indeed, there is a strange phenomenon occurring within Antares as it is suddenly appearing to go supernova. This would normally be a common sight within our universe at any given time. But at this time, Antares seems to have grown in size so exponentially that the sight is historically unprecedented. Any other time there would be no need for concern, but this astronomical event could have a very serious effect on the entire universe. Just as this thought crosses Dr. Beck's mind, and he slowly begins to utter the words, Holy Mother of... Antares explodes with the force of a zillion nuclear bombs lighting up the sky like the birth of a brand new sun. This explosion sends particles and pieces of the star hurling through space at unimaginable speeds. It just so happens that a very consistent amount of these particles are able to enter the Earth's atmosphere causing a brief meteor shower and contaminating a large area just off the east coast of the United States in the Atlantic Ocean. Everyone in the general area are concerned about the larger meteors, leaving the particles unnoticed that have heavily contaminated the ocean with no trace of their existence. So here we are at the start of the Independence Day weekend, to only have thousands of people flooding the eastern coastal beaches with no real awareness of any immediate dangers. This proves to be somewhat costly as people begin to dive into the cool coastal waters exposing themselves to the intragalactic particles set forth to change their entire existence. At first, people carry on with their normal yearly Independence Day routines until several days after when most of the very young people start to experience strange illnesses that break up their summer activities. This leaves some bedridden for a day or so with milder symptoms occurring for a day or two before and after the most intense portion of the sickness. Some experience, bloody noses, upset stomachs, cold chills, coughing, fever, sweats, and other mild to major symptoms of the common cold to extreme flu. Soon after all symptoms have subsided, people start to notice that they feel like they've never felt before, better than ever, as they start to notice changes in their everyday life, giving them new purpose that will help them embark on a journey to figure out life's true meaning and exactly what they should do with their newly discovered gifts. How informative and to the point was that? It was so exciting being a big part of the first backstory for the Relics of the Unknown project. Truth be told, it is so satisfying to be able to do something you really love. We were so fortunate to be able to bring this project to life. I cannot wait until we start getting everything moving. That way we can bring you guys the best of our content in the future. To start, we've already illustrated our first comic poster, but that's only the beginning. We are working on the next phase as we speak with actual comic books and short animated films. It's still early, but I know our fans, even at this point, cannot wait to see us bring it. This next backstory is a really interesting character, as she is featured in the first comic poster, which will be offered in the Paradigm Pro Shop after we officially launch the Paradigm PCS social media site. Please allow us to present to you, none other than the sassy and fiery Jessica Blaze, everybody. Hey, what's up? People know me as Jessica Blaze. You know, the typical redheaded, overly cute 16-year-old hot girl that you might find in your local high school? Yeah, that used to be me. Well, until that next big bang or whatever the heck it was, everything changed after that. 
and that's when all secrets started to come out, forcing every bit of what we used to know as reality to totally unravel. Not long after the big meteor shower, my family and I took a trip to Virginia Beach. It was a great outing, filled with typical beach time fun and tons of laughter. However, as we were getting ready to leave, my mom engaged in a conversation with some of her well-known beach-going acquaintances. That's when I, being the little freaking pyro that I was, decided to light matches and throw them over the pier. Kids, right? Fireworks and celebrations, it's just so hard to resist. Anyway, while leaning over the railing, tossing matches and watching them dance in the air only to be extinguished by the cool ocean water, I heard my mom's voice calling out to me, warning me to be careful. Just as she turned back around, I lost my footing and fell over the railing, hitting my head on the side of the pier. The next thing I remember is waking up on the beach with some super fine 19-year-old lifeguard giving me mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. I thought I had died and gone to heaven. Boy, that lifeguard was cute. I also remember spitting up some water as I came to, and eventually, I was taken to the nearest hospital in an ambulance to make sure I was okay. While in the hospital, having a late dinner, my dad asked me in the most endearing voice if I had enough to eat. I replied, I could go for another apple juice. And as my dad was leaving the room, he made a remark about how a dad's job is just never done. Playfully, I snapped my fingers, which ignited a flame right there in the palm of my hand. I was able to examine it for a few seconds before hearing my dad's footsteps returning. That's when I quickly blew out the flame that had stolen my undivided attention for that moment. My dad entered the room with my release papers, asking if I was ready to go. I replied, yes. And ever since that day, I've been trying to walk off this fire burning deep within my soul. It's like I've been given this incredible power and I'm determined to understand it so that it helps me to fully control it. So here I am, Jessica Blaze, the girl with fire coursing through her veins, navigating this new world of abilities and discoveries. Join me as I unravel the mysteries and face the challenges that lie ahead, as I learn how to harness and embrace the flames that come from within. It's going to be an adventure like no other, and trust me, I'm ready to walk the path of the blazing truth. Hopefully I see you around. So I guess this is bye for now. That was Jessica Blaze Everybody, and her story was definitely a hot one. These characters are for entertainment purposes only, which means they were created and meant to entertain. Please, no one make suggestions that are outside the context that these characters were meant to be created in. About 99.9% .9 of all of our fans have been extremely cool, and we appreciate all of you, and we assure you that our intentions are solely to have your best interest in mind. Now that that's out the way, we can get back to what our community enjoys doing the most. That's having a good time. This next backstory is another fan favorite as it is almost a tearjerker. Well, from a storytelling standpoint, that is. But anyway, her name is Ariana Gonzalez, and her story is nothing short of emotional. So grab a Kleenex, or just do what the rest of us do and just prepare to be entertained. Let's go. Hey there, folks. I'm Ariana Gonzalez. And let me tell you, what I've been through has got to be some of the weirdest shit in the history of life itself. Or at least in all my years of living. Okay, sorry for the language, but this story is nothing less than a straight-up double mind freak. It all started that evening on our ranch with my dear grandmother. Right before the sun had officially set, we knew something had happened in space, and that it was some kind of explosion. But most of the details were a little, let's say, misconstrued. We had heard about a meteor shower, but didn't really expect it to affect us. Thankfully, our ranch wasn't significantly damaged, except for one unforgettable event. You see, there was a direct impact from one of the meteorites. I'd say it was probably the size of a big old juicy watermelon that streaked across the sky and plunged directly into this beautiful pond right behind me. Now, normally I'd steer clear of anything related to UFOs, close encounters, or some sort of international projectile. But there I was, gathering up the much needed courage to do what I felt like was a proper investigation. With bare feet, I tiptoed towards the pond, leaving my grandmother standing closer to the edge. 
but as soon as I stepped into the water, I realized something was off. Instead of the expected warmth, the water was incredibly cool, sending a shiver down my spine. Determined, I retrieved the meteorite and brought it into our kitchen for examination. My grandmother considered calling the local radio or news station, but we decided to sleep on it and make a decision about it the next morning. Little did we know, that decision would mark the beginning of a strange journey. We awoke feeling an inexplicable coldness, a sickness almost creeping over us. We attributed it to the chilly pond water and decided to try to rest and recover. After five days of on and off sleeping and bed resting, I finally regained my strength and ventured out of my room. The house felt eerily silent, and my first thought was to check on my grandmother. As I reached her room, my heart immediately sank. She lay motionless, wearing the same clothes as before, and there was no response at all when I called her name. Panic consumed me as tears began to stream down my cheeks and onto the hardwood floor as I distraughtly walked to the kitchen. I promptly called 911, but while trying to explain the situation, I suddenly dropped the phone as the grief from it all began to overwhelm me. Without thinking, I ran out of the house, sprinting with every ounce of emotion racing through my mind, body, and soul as you could imagine. And then, in some kind of weird or strange twist of fate, my body began to instantly transform. As my sprint turned into a gallop, my upper body leaned forward and my hands began to morph into the hooves of one of my favorite animals. Then I totally and unexpectedly transformed into this beautiful thoroughbred horse galloping through the fields. It was an overwhelming experience, as it was also my very first taste of shape-shifting. As I ran, all my anger and emotion began to gradually dissipate. After running half a mile, I came to a complete halt. My body contorted, shifting back into my 19-year-old self. All the anger and sadness that I had felt began to totally ease. Afterwards, I began to make my way back to the house, only to find that the town police, the firemen, and the EMTs were all cleaning up the scene and preparing to leave. They asked if I was okay, and I replied that I would be. In my grandmother's will, she totally left everything on the ranch to me and only me. I couldn't believe it, but I actually expected nothing less. Her presence will always be deeply missed, but I know she'd want me to carry on. There is just no alternative. Now it's up to me to honor her, as well as preserve the legacy of this ranch that holds so many of our cherished memories. Life may throw us unimaginable twists and turns, but we must always find the strength to carry on. I will forever cherish the love as well as the bond that I shared with my grandmother. You best also believe that I'll strive to find a way to always make her proud of everything I do. I seriously hope I didn't bore you to death with all of my traumatic experiences, but I just wanted you to know my story and what's really been eating me. You know, I'm sure we'll see each other again sometime though. That story just satisfies me every time I hear it, so I have to agree with our fans and our followers when I say, it's one of our favorites too. Now please cleanse your auditory palates and prepare yourself for one of the most bizarre yet equally appealing backstories that we've come up with. Everything from her looks to even tweaking her voice was totally organic and original. And so is her storyline. All hail everybody, please welcome none other than the Queen of Proxima B. Greetings, inhabitants of Earth. I am Queen of the world known to you as Proxima B, ruler of a world that exists beyond the boundaries of your solar system. I speak to you now with knowledge of your technology and an understanding of your literary dialect. It is whispered among your kind that in the event of Earth's demise, the denizens of your homeland may seek refuge upon Proxima B. While this is not an impossible notion, I urge you to comprehend the magnitude of such a journey. Proxima B, our beloved home, exists in a state of perpetual duality. One side basks eternally in the warming glow of Proxima Centauri, which is known to you as our sun, while the other is shrouded in infinite darkness. This phenomenon, known as tidal lock, occurs due to the gravitational pull between our planet and our star. You may witness the flashing artificial lights emanating from our world, a visual testament to our advanced civilization. But I caution you, dear earthly beings, for these lights carry a profound meaning. They serve as a sign, 
a beacon that declares our presence and our resolve. I implore you to heed my words with the utmost seriousness. The occupants of Proxima B, now known to you as the Proxima Beings, are steadfast in our dedication to defend our homeland. We shall not yield, nor shall we allow our planet to be seized without resistance. Therefore, I issue a stern warning to all who dwell upon Earth. Approach Proxima B with peaceful intentions, or be prepared to face the dire consequences. We shall fight with unwavering determination, for this land is our sanctuary as well as our birthright. Let it be known, inhabitants of Earth, that we, the Proxima Beings, will not hesitate to defend our world until the very last breath. We extend our hands in peace, but we will meet any aggression with unyielding force. So I say to you, choose your path wisely. Come in peace or leave through the afterlife. The choice rests in your hands. Woo! She is definitely all worked up. We cannot wait to bring more content in the future regarding this character. Who knows, she may even be setting the stage for some sort of intergalactic battle or warfare. Either way, the anticipation is real. Now, let's venture back to the very beginning of all this turmoil with the backstory of Dr. Candy Wright. Just maybe she can clear up any confusion, or at the very least, offer a little bit of hope for all who have been affected. Greetings, I'm Dr. Candy. Candy Wright. Let me just start off by saying that this journey has been nothing less than exhilarating. Now, I know you've heard the tales, but there's nothing like hearing it straight from the source, right? Imagine this, a morning etched in memory as Antares unraveled all of its secrets. I was in the observatory, tending to tasks, with a dash of paperwork as well as telescope checks. And yes, this is that point where guys usually compliment me on my intellect and other assets. But hey, let's zoom back to the main event. As others slept, I was locked onto the monitor that beheld a resplendent, unapologetically colossal crimson giant known as Antares. That was sure to challenge the skies. I knew at that point it was time to get Dr. Beck on the line. Swift like an intergalactic comet, there was Dr. Beck speedily reaching the observatory. I ushered him to the telescope monitor where Antares loomed, its immensity totally taking our breath away. Time seemed to pause and then, Holy Mother of God was Dr. Beck's words. A sentence rightfully left unfinished as Antares erupted on the screen, a cosmic spectacle unseen by anyone before us. Those moments now a blur as the meteor shower followed, a breathtaking aftermath. Amidst it all, I find solace relying on Dr. Beck as a beacon in this cosmic storm. Now, before you start weaving tales, let's be clear. There's nothing funny going on between us. Yes, he's dreamy, but professionalism reigns supreme. After all, who knows what the cosmos holds for us? Life's intricate. Sometimes it seems like the blind leading the blind. But trust me, amidst the star's complexity, I'm here, offering guidance and understanding. Stay curious, stay hopeful, reach out, trust me I'll be here, ready to unravel this cosmic enigma together. That was Dr. Candy Wright, everybody. She is just as lovely as she is smart. Now, I want you to stop and think for a second. Okay, what if you had the power to bring to life a character that only exists in everybody's thoughts? Would you relish it? Well, we did just that with this next character. And trust me, there is no introduction really needed for the Angel of Death other than our spin on him being part of a legion of angels created to see mortal beings into the afterlife. Scary, but necessary in the relics of the unknown storyline. This covenant is known only as the Legion of Death. In the shadows of the unknown, where darkness and mortality converge, exists an enigmatic organization known as the Legion of Death. Within its ranks dwell the fabled angels of this legion, beings that are tasked with a somber duty that fate has bestowed upon them. I am the Angel of Death, a servant of the Legion, and a harbinger of the inevitable. From the depths of eternity, I emerge to collect the debts that are owed, for every soul carries a balance, an unpaid debt that must be settled. In these days there is no escape, for time marches on, and every man must face the ultimate reckoning. The debts accrued through the tapestry of life are called forth, and the final price must be paid. 
Within the embrace of darkness, I stand as the final arbiter, wielding the scythe of fate. The hourglass of existence measures the sands of time, as the debts owed draw near their due. To our legion, the realm of the departed awaits the reckoning of every mortal soul. Fear not, for in this grand tapestry of existence, all shall be revealed. Each debt shall be accounted for, and every soul must listen, for the truth of their own reckoning shall be unveiled. For this is where mysteries are found, and debts are settled. Here you shall journey through the annals of forgotten tales, and face the shadows that lurk beyond the veil. Prepare yourselves, for I invite you to peer into the depths of your own soul. What true debt do you owe? For your destiny shall be unveiled in due time. Welcome to Relics of the Unknown. I know we've all been wanting to bring that character to life ever since the first time we heard his name. Hopefully you are all entertained as we settle in for another one of the first characters thought up in the Relics of the Unknown storyline. Jack is what you might call a unique character as he is hard-nosed and directly to the point. You can tell that he was probably the misunderstood type growing up as he'd most likely chosen a path that not too many people would follow. With all that being said, meet Jackal everybody. All right, all right. Who's in the mood for a fucking story time? Everybody knows that something wasn't quite right after the big meteor shower. I mean, come on. That's like the worst thing that could ever fucking happen besides revelations and the whole shebang, you know? I still don't understand why they'd call something like that a fucking shower. I mean, only if fireballs were coming out of the fucking shower head could it be a fucking shower to me. Anyway, this is how that day all started and how it all changed my life forever in the years to come. Me and the boys were all hanging out in the alley shooting dice like we normally do before it all went down. There was me, Tommy, Louie, my cousin Vinny, and his girl Shirlene. Tommy was just about to break us all when he rolled the dice and a loud screaming whistle echoed throughout the night, followed by several more after. All of us dropped everything including all the money and ran for our fucking lives. What are you, crazy? I know what you're thinking. So they left the fucking money? Hell yeah, we left the fucking money, you idiot. That's when you actually feel like your life is priceless. Any other time we're all heroes and the whole nine, you know. So we're all running for our lives when out of the blue a damn meteorite or whatever crashed into the building of one of the alleys we were running through. That's when it hit me. That deafening sound and that loud concussion. Right out of a fucking war movie or something like that. All I remember is us all running separate ways after the big explosion. My first instinct was to run toward the beach since it was literally like a football field's distance from where I was at. After running all the way down to the waterfront like an NFL receiver on a breakaway touchdown, all I remember is jumping off the dock so far into the water that I finally felt safe for a few seconds. I don't know what it was, but I immediately dove under the surface and swam as far as I could without coming up for air. At this point I saw flashes over my head, and all of a sudden felt an impact in the water several yards from me. After getting the soul scared out of me, I instinctively swam up to the surface where the coast finally seemed all clear for once. I didn't see my friends for a few days as I was just eager to get home and make sure everything was okay with the family. After checking on the family and making sure everything was copacetic, I went to bed with serious fatigue and the worst headache a person could probably ever endure. Felt like 10 monkeys banging on pots and pan drum sets in there. It stayed like that for probably four or five days, I think. All I could do was lay in the bed and wait for it all to pass. By that following weekend, I was feeling much better and decided to get out of the bed after hearing a knock at the door. It was Shirlene who came in and spoke to the family and me. She started to utter her words, then came several tears streaming slowly down her face, and then more gradually as she then started in by saying, I don't want to beat around the bush here, you guys. But during the meteor shower, there was an explosion that hit the building right next to us. Then she went on to say how her and Vinny tried to stay together, but after the explosion she lost sight of him, but had to keep running because that's what her mind and body was telling her to do. She said after all of the chaos had subsided, she went back to the spot where she and Vinny had gotten separated and saw that there was indeed a hand reaching out from underneath the rubble. 
She then called 911 from her cell phone and waited for them to arrive while holding Vinny's hand. After the first responders arrived, she was then instructed that she would have to leave while the cleanup crew was on the scene, and that she would be notified with the victim's family to come identify the body. She said she had just come from the morgue with Vinny's family, and that Vinny was gone. She said he's gone, you guys, with the tears flowing uncontrollably at this point. I was so enraged that I had to go outside, practically brushing past everyone in the room as quickly as I could. When I got outside, I was so engulfed in rage that my whole body turned piping hot, and I just remember seeing red. So red that the whole upper half of my body burst into red flames lighting up the whole street corner. The flames began to burn so deep that I could feel them literally shooting out of my eye sockets. Now, I don't know where the fuck you come from, but around here, we call that what it is. Crazy shit. After getting myself together and calming back down, I decided to go in my room and lock myself in for a couple of more days. All I know is that since that day I've been really pissed off and when I'm upset there is nothing that can stop me from imposing my will. I hope this story didn't totally creep you the fuck out. If it did, maybe we won't ever see each other again. Wasn't he just lovely? About as lovable as another family's pit bull pet, right? Jackal gives me the creeps, but we just couldn't leave him out of the storyline as he offers a change of pace and gives you that sort of vibe that you just might encounter in real life. Now comes one of the most intriguing parts of creating stories, the trailers. We've already put together a few trailers for the different realms involved in the Relics of the Unknown project. I'll also give you guys an opportunity to check those out here as well if you have not already. First up is the Dark Realm trailer. Welcome to the Dark Realm, where the light is forbidden. If you have good in your heart, you must always keep it hidden. All beings who dwell here bathe in blood, have a hunger for innocent lives, while putting adversaries deep beneath the mud. From the vampires, to the werewolves, to the witches, the gargoyles, and the legend of death. It is true that the Dark Realm is not for the faint of heart. And it's all coming soon in the Relics of the Unknown Project. And now, the Frost Realm trailer. The Frost Realm. From the Relics of the Unknown Project. Follow us on TikTok at Paradigm Proco Studios. Welcome to the Frost Realm, where the cold is bitter, but the heart of a queen is always warm even throughout the eternal winter. Most beings here have learned to keep their cool, but pack the bite of a minus 30 degree straight wind, so don't ever be fooled. The Frost Realm, coming soon, only in the Relics of the Unknown Project, brought to you by Paradigm Pro Co Studios. Next up, the Other Realm trailer. Welcome to the Other Realm where souls are now born. And the thin line between reality and mystery now becomes torn. Coming to you soon, only in the relics of the unknown project. Brought to you by Paradigm Broco Studios. And the final trailer for now, The Underrealm. This trailer is as eerie as all get out, but it really does capture what we are trying to depict. We'll be sure and post the next trailers for you guys as we create them going forward. Welcome to the Under Realm, where mortal beings dare not enter, and the talk is of the most vile and treacherous of sinners. Coming for you soon, only in the Relics of the Unknown Project, brought to you by Paradigm Pro Co Studios. That horn was eerie as hell, but I say we nailed it. But you know what they say, hell hath no fury. Anyway, speaking of which, who in the hell took it upon themselves to infuriate the Light Witches? 
Let's let Persephone tell us how she feels about it, and what her proclamation just might be. Oh, the light I see has drawn you toward the light realm, for what is life even in its immortal state without the radiant embrace of light? It is nothing, a mere void of existence. Unless, of course, you contemplate what festers in the shadows, sinister and foreboding, waiting for the opportune moment to ensnare the innocent and ensnarl the unsuspecting. It is undeniable that light occasionally engages in clashes with the shadows, but such confrontations only arise in the face of compelling circumstances. Be assured, we, the Light Witches, possess a discerning wisdom, understanding when it is paramount to unite rather than divide. The eternal realms, they teeter on the precipice of instability, and the fragility of existence is increasingly evident. It is often said that beauty is but skin deep, but true triumph, the kind that resonates through the ages, emanates from the depths of one's soul. A light witch's soul, forged in the luminescent fires of purity, is unyielding, indomitable, and not easily vanquished. Disregard us at your peril, for our strength comes from an unwavering commitment to the forces of good. The eternal realms bear witness to an eternal struggle. Corruption and malevolence, often raise their repulsive heads just beyond the horizon, peaking at the right moment to pounce like a fully grown king of the pride lion in a deadlock collision with its helpless prey. For what is rout in the dark, their unilluminated designs and insidious secrets will eventually be unveiled to the light. And when that moment arrives, rest assured, we shall be prepared. We shall stand as a resplendent beacon of hope a bastion against the encroaching darkness. Welcome, seeker of the light, to a realm where goodness prevails and where we, the light witches, remain ever vigilant. In unity, we shall face the approaching tempest, for light shall conquer all that seeks to obscure it. And if you should ever find yourself surrounded by darkness, just remember to follow the light. See you soon. You know, it's always tough to try to portray what a good witch's image might just be like. But Persephone was another favorite amongst our community. Rightfully so, as she is strange, but her beauty is as stunning as the morning sunrise. This next character may not have been a crowd favorite, but nevertheless, he brings mystery as well as hope to the table. Hitting his voice spot on was a bit of a challenge, but it went directly as planned. We hope you all enjoy the King of the Frost Realm as he definitely gives off the right kind of vibe. Ah, greetings, traveler. You find yourself in the embrace of the Frost Realm, an embrace that is as cold as the iciest winds that sweep these lands, an eternal realm where kingship is both given and earned in that very same regard. In the Frost Realm, the temperature might be as cold as winter's milk, but let me assure you, it does not mean that our hearts have to follow suit. No, indeed. Beneath this icy exterior beats a heart that knows warmth, especially when it comes to matters of eternal diplomacy. You see, we, the kings and the queens of the Frost Realm, have taken a solemn vow. A vow of neutrality. A vow to remain untouched by the conflicts that may plague the other eternal realms but do not mistake our neutrality for indifference. It is a very calculated stance, as we intend to keep our cool like a frosty winter's night. Unless, of course, the unthinkable occurs, the realms themselves turning against each other, dousing themselves in the flames of eternal war. In such dire times, we, the Frost Realm kings and queens, will not be frozen in indecision. No. We shall thaw the situation with our analytical approach, which will determine the best course for sustainable peace. You could say we are what you might call the chill factor in this eternal equation, ensuring that the warmth of harmony prevails. So, fear not the frost, for within it lies not just coldness, but a commitment to equilibrium. A commitment that, if tested, shall be met with a resolve as unyielding as the deepest of winter's freeze. Whenever you are faced with adversity, you should first remember to remain calm, then analyze the situation. This allows you to calculate your best-case scenario, thus coming up with a proper solution. 
Now, if someone should ever force you to become the hothead, just remember to keep your cool. You can see where he may not be some people's favorite, but one thing he does do is deliver. I mean, after all, who doesn't love and hate a king, you know? So everybody's always wanted to meet the perfect girl, be it guys or girls. So we did the next best thing and created one. Jazalyn Ortega is the brains and the beauty, and trust me, she knows how to use both. Please help me welcome the USC prodigy, everybody. Jazalyn Ortega. Hey there, everyone. I'm Jazalyn Ortega, and boy, let me tell you about my journey so far. I've had the wildest ride, and I'm loving every moment of it. So let's rewind a bit and start from the beginning, shall we? I was always known as the nerdy brainiac in school, but hey, I rocked it. At the age of 16, I completed all my high school credits with honors, scoring a 1550 on the SAT. Okay, maybe I slacked off a bit before the test, but hey, who needs a perfect score when you can get into USC, right? I know, I know, some may say I should have chosen the Ivy Leagues, but USC felt like the perfect fit for me. You see, I wanted to experience college life as a typical young woman, not just as a bookworm. USC was my ticket to explore new horizons, embrace my dreams, and take control of my destiny. After earning my degree, I focused on helping troubled adolescents and unleashing the potential in professional athletes. Postgraduate degrees? Oh, I nailed those too. Now let me tell you about my mind-blowing experience. It happened on a sunny day in Santa Monica, just before my USC journey began. While snorkeling in the ocean, I stumbled upon a mysterious rock that seemed just a bit out of place, to say the least. As I touched it, instantaneously some sort of an electric pulse surged through me like a bolt of lightning on a wet, stormy day, flashing futuristic images throughout my mind. Only I felt very conductive at that point, like this moment was meant to be. Only thing is that it was so surreal that I actually needed a serious reality check to snap myself back out of it. That meteor shower? It affected the whole Earth, folks, not just me. I'm living proof that it's left its mark on all of us in mysterious ways. My life took an unexpected turn, and boy, am I grateful for it. Guiding our younger generation, inspiring them to overcome life's unfortunate obstacles, and helping professional athletes reach their full potential, that's my calling. Honestly, my heart is undeniably with professional basketball. The game, the players, the passion, it's all just so very extremely enthralling. I can't wait to dive back into my work, discovering the mysteries of the mind and what unpredictability the future holds. So, you know what to call me now? I'm Dr. Jazalyn Ortega. It's been a pleasure sharing my story with you. And hey, don't be a stranger. Remember, life is full of surprises and it's up to us to make the most of them. Embrace the unknown and let your journey be as thrilling as mine. I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Until then, take care and keep reaching for the stars. Jazalyn is just lovely. I can definitely see why she is a fan favorite as well. Ah, to be the total package. Speaking of total packages, here comes the bad boy of the Relics of the Unknown project. Samuel is quite the piece of work. Don't let him fool you by luring you into one of his meticulously crafted traps. He is as nasty and foul as nasty and foul can get. But still try to enjoy him as his backstory is as important as the duality between good and evil. I am Samuel, supreme ruler of the Underrealm. In these days of existence, most beings are born with the inherent desire to do good, or at least, they delude themselves into aspiring to do so. I too was once amongst those who strove for righteousness. But in my pursuit, I found myself gripped by a relentless sensation, a pervasive sentiment that my benevolent acts, my selfless kindness, went unnoticed and unappreciated by those I intended to aid. However, this disillusionment was nothing more than a matter of perspective, for the nature of kindness is such that it blooms in the hearts of the willing and also seeks no immediate recognition. As I've casted my gaze upon the realm of mortals, it became painfully apparent that it was marred by an unfathomable volume of hatred. The poison of hatred does not manifest suddenly. It festers, brews, and bubbles forth like the anticipation of a hearty stew, the product of a being's thoughts and 
more of others. It was then, at the precipice of self-realization, that I understood. I am not a do-gooder, and I am no one's emotional doormat. I am the embodiment of death and destruction, an entity that leaves in its wake sheer devastation for all those who dare oppose me. That is why I stand as an outsider among the eternal realms, and also why I crafted the fire realm. In this fiery abyss, I wield the power to summon the darkest and most malevolent entities, unknown to those who have not traversed the treacherous path of eternity. These brimstone-clad soldiers and sentinels of evil are not merely servants. They are instruments of my unfaltering will, and they shall serve me faithfully until the appointed hour arrives to unleash the full fury of their existence. This machination has already taken root among the mortal world, where it persists until men cast aside their transgressions. Until such time, they will remain marionettes, dancing to the discordant tune of my commands, minions to a higher power. It is this very irony, this unsettling truth, that has come to embody the essence of my existence. Good was never meant to fall before the wicked, but the bitter paradox of life has willed it so. It is as if malevolence derives an almost perverse satisfaction from this twisted victory, continuously fanning the flames of resentment within the hearts of the virtuous. Prepare for the inexorable march of darkness. Embrace whatever fate has decreed for the malevolent. For you shall see me very, very soon. You see, I told you he was a piece of work, as I do hold true to my points. Next up is Suri, you guys, as she introduces us to the other realm. I love this realm as it gives us an opportunity to consider what we may not always be able to see or fathom. Her beauty is also one of a kind running deeply to her soul. She was also a favorite of our fans and followers. Feel free to enjoy her again if you have already partaken. If not, be prepared to be thoroughly impressed. Hmm, I see you've drifted into the other realm, the place where destiny's chosen path leads. Welcome, but beware, for not all is as it seems. Most beings here are created equal, except for just one, Malachi. He's a master of his own domain, controlling all within the shadows, answering to no one. Should your mind falter, treading with caution becomes the key. For Malachi's dealings and the other realm's touch may twist your fate's tapestry. Everyone here is a lost soul. If you are quiet, you can even hear them speaking amongst themselves about a life that was, or a life that is now not, that has become a nightmarish echo of a whisper from the past, now intertwined with the future. The typical source of things that spark bad dreams. The air here is a brisk fog with a cold breeze that can easily chill you to the bone if it is the flesh of a mere mortal that you still possess. The kings of the Overrealm render judgment here as well, the eternal realm's crossroads, where destinies interlace and reality's essence slowly loses its embrace. So remember to be vigilant, for the other realm's allure may enchant, but its dangers are like that of a siren's call, able to bewitch even the bravest of hearts. Heed this counsel and tread wisely. The portal beckons and the unknown awaits. Venture forth or retreat, for choice and consequence entwine in this realm's mysterious fate. Until our paths converge once more in the enigmatic embrace of the other realm, we shall meet again one day and bask in the inevitability of fate's doctrine. Now get ghost. Suri is worthy of being one of our favorites too. As you see, she does not disappoint. Next up is the Queen of Solemn. She was not voted as a fan favorite, but she is still very important amongst these characters as she is the one to enlighten the affected people of Earth about the eternal realms and what to do with their newly discovered abilities. Greetings, inhabitants of Earth. I am the Queen of Solemn an angel-human hybrid sent down from the elders of the Overrealm. 
I come to you as a harbinger of a new purpose, a catalyst for change. For those who have come into direct contact with the contaminated waters of the Antares explosion, I speak to you today to bridge the gap between realms and shed light upon the secrets of eternity. You see, I possess the ability to pass through the different realms of eternity, including the Overrealm, the Underrealm, the Aquarealm, the Other Realm, the Dark Realm, the Light Realm, the Frost Realm, the Droid Realm, and even Proxima B. However, there is one realm I dare not venture into, for it is a domain of peril and treachery. The Fire Realm, with its evil demons and servants of Sanya, the king of the Underrealm, who pose great risks. My untimely displacement there could ignite a catastrophic war between the Overrealm and the Underrealm. Such a conflict would unravel the stability of life, including the afterlife, and threaten the entire existence of all beings. The delicate balance that holds the realms together would be shattered, plunging both the mortal world and the eternal realms into total chaos. However, the passage to planet Earth has always been accessible to me, which leads me to venture here often, allowing me to alter the course of many human lives. I bring a message of hope, of understanding to embrace the newfound capabilities bestowed upon me by the particles of Antares, which contaminated the waters of your planet. I'm sure you know by now that your purpose has now been totally redefined. Thus, I stand before you as a guardian, guiding you towards your true potential. My purpose is to lead you on a path of enlightenment and growth where the energies of the realms of eternity can intertwine harmoniously. Embrace your newfound capabilities, for they are gifts from the cosmos. Unleash the power within, not for selfish gain, but for the betterment of yourselves and those around you. Your destinies have been forever altered, and I am here to guide you towards the path of balance and purpose. Together, we can navigate the realms, drawing strength from the Overrealm and the other realms that align with the light. Let us forge a new era where the realms intertwine and humanity embraces its potential as the bridge between worlds. Remember, dear inhabitants of planet Earth, your connection to the realms of eternity is a precious gift. Cherish it, wield it wisely and let it illuminate the path towards a brighter future for all, or else. As you see, she may not be the most appealing to everyone, but she is a solid foundation for the rest of the characters, as they will need guidance as well as allies going forward. Next up is the first official Relics of the Unknown project trailer. Enjoy it, you guys, as this is only the beginning for us, and the only way to go from here is up. We thank all of you guys for joining us on our journey. Have you ever wondered what lies beyond the Earth's naked eye? Or what might just happen if scientists all agreed that our planet was entirely too close to the next biggest supernova explosion? Join Dr. Candy Wright and Dr. Alex Beck as they witness the apocalyptic supernova explosion of the Antares star and the meteor shower that rains down on our planet directly after like Satan's hell fire. Also introducing the scorching hot Jessica Blaze. Her story is enough to heat up even the coldest of hearts. From Paradigm Pro Pro Studios comes Relics of the Unknown. The first project from the critically acclaimed series. Come be a part of it all. Okay, you guys. We'll end it with one of our very special videos about how excited we are to have started this project, as well as have every one of you along for the ride. This journey has been somewhat difficult, but also very enjoyable as we get set to implement the next phases of production. You know, when we first started Paradigm Pro Co. Studios, we knew we had something special. Think about it. If this is only the beginning for our Relics of the Unknown project, just think for a second about the possibilities that the future might just hold for us. You guys, we seriously appreciate all the likes, views, and follows. Let's try our best to make this project a true competitor. Trust me, you guys do not want to miss out on any of our future plans. That's it for this round of our live session, you guys. We want to thank everybody involved, from our founder Prez, to our team of developers, and most of all, our supporters. 
Anything is possible with you guys. We have no plans of letting down any of our backers, as we plan to involve you guys on our new Paradigm PCS social media site set to launch very soon. There will be tons to talk about and even more to look forward to. I actually think we're going to spin this thing back one more time, though, for the people who were just a little too late to catch the beginning of this session. All right, you guys, let's get it.